My name's Freya Bass and I own Bags Amore, a handbag restoration company in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to walk you through how I restore a $4,000 Chanel vanity case. Typical of a bag of this age, the lining is disintegrating as it is a coated fabric. We also have wear and tear to the outer corners. This bag was purchased 10 years ago for 1500 US dollars. It is today worth between 3000 and 5000 dollars. So in its restored state, it will be worth more towards $5,000. To begin the process, I'm going to remove the strap from the bag. So I'm going to do this using some small pliers to gently remove the chain from the link. The strap is very worn, so there is color wear, dirt build up and the metalwork is tarnished. I'm then going to take a quick unpip and undo the stitches at the end of the chain. I now need to unthread the leather through the chain so that it's completely separated from the metalwork. Now I've fully removed the leather from the chain, I'm going to clean the strap. So the leather strap will just be cleaned initially with foam cleaner. So I'm doing this with a horsehair hide brush, which is nice and gentle to get into the grain of the leather. I'm then going to continue this process throughout the exterior of the bag. So I'm just applying foam cleaner to the bag surface, doing one panel at a time. I'm gently massaging the foam into the grain of the leather. It is always important to clean the bag before applying pigment. This will mean that the pigments will bond to the leather better. If there's anything left on the surface of the bag, such as silicones from protector sprays or day-to-day -day dirt buildup, this could hinder the bonding process. Now I'm going to clean the interior of the bag. I just need to clean as much of the debris away as possible. So I'm using a much more gentle cleaner here, which is like a, a luxury leather cleaner. So it's a water-based cleaner, and I'm basically just gonna gently wipe inside the lining. This has to be done really gently as if any pressure is put on, or if a product that was incorrect was used, it will then start to remove even more of the lining. We need to preserve as much of the original lining as possible to make the job easier in the restoring stage. Now we've fully cleaned the bag inside and out, I'm going to move over to the repair process. The interior of the bag is disintegrating. This is quite common with this age bag as it was made from a coated fabric. Over time and due to humidity, the surface of the lining will start to crumble and come away. We need to restore the lining as close to the original as possible, so we're going to rebuild the surface using fillers and pigments. So here I'm going to use a flexible filler. This filler moves with the surface of the leather or fabric, so I'm just going to apply this using a very soft and small paintbrush so I can get a nice even surface across the whole interior lining. The idea is to restore the original and avoid having to replace something like this. This means we retain the original Chanel logo. I'm going to do this very slowly to make sure that I get a good even coverage all the way around. I'm going to start using the filler along the top rim and then work my way down into the main crevices of the lining. Once applied, this filler needs 24 hours to cure. Now I've left the filler for 24 hours, I'm sanding down the surface, so this is to remove any sort of bits of grain or lumps or bumps and try and get a smooth finish. I'm just going to start sanding around the top really gently. I'm using a very fine sandpaper so it doesn't grab or wear down the surface of the original lining. And I'm then going to wipe over with some alcohol. This will remove any of the surface dust that has been created from the sandpaper and then it will also slightly soften the filler to help it smooth and blend into the original surface of the lining. So before airbrushing I'm just going to remove the CC lock hardware. This makes it much easier to get an even coat around the lock. 
I'm just going to unscrew this with a small flathead screwdriver. Once I've removed that, I'm going to tape up the remaining hardware on the bag. So now I'm just going to move on to mixing a colour for the bag. I custom mix every colour by eyes. So I tend to use about three or four paints um, to mix each colour. So here I'm using caramel, gold yellow and citron. I'm mixing these together and I'm just going to test the colour on a small area on the bag to make sure it matches. This can take a few attempts sometimes, just to make sure that the colour is absolutely spot on. Now I've got my colour and I'm good to go, I'm just going to pop it into an airbrush. If I use an airbrush as it allows me to create lots of fine coats of pigment, rather than painting it on, which would go on too thick. It's really important not to too heavily coat a bag with paints, pigments and fillers. Less is always more, so we still want to preserve the original look and feel of the bag. I'm just going to work my way around each section of the bag, concentrating on the areas that have more wear. Now I've managed to get a nice coat of pigment over all of the bag, I'm then going to use a finish. A finish is a clear coat sealant which goes on top of the pigment to protect it from wear and tear. Here I've mixed about two thirds high gloss to a third matte to get a nice satin sheen which reflects the original leather. I'm just going to airbrush this finish over the whole bag and then leave it to dry. Now moving on to the leather in the strap, I'm actually going to paint this on with a paintbrush so as not to have too much wasted paint. So I'm just going to run all the way along the strap with one coat, leave it to dry and then repeat the process. I am then going to finish this off again with airbrushing the finish for a nice even layer across the whole strap. Now I'm going to move on to the lining. I'm going to take my paintbrush and paint in over all of the areas where the surface had chipped away. This may take a few coats as it was shown white underneath but I need to rebuild the colour back up to match the surface lining. Once I've done that, I'm going to apply a finish. Due to the severity of the condition of this lining, there will still remain a few imperfections, but what we have done is resealed and recoated the surface, so this will prevent any further damage from happening and give this handbag a new lease on life. Now that I've completed all of the airbrushing, I am now going to polish the hardware. Here I'm going to use a fine grey metal polish to just gently polish the surface of the metal. This will remove any of the tarnishing. As I'm doing so, you can see the dark colour of the tarnished metal work coming off onto the cotton bud. I'm going to polish all the links on the strap to bring them up to a nice shiny gold. Now all the colour work is done, I'm going to reattach the strap. I'm going to firstly re-thread the leather through the strap. It's really important that you align the leather up properly so that you get the same amount each end. I am now using the pliers to reattach the chain to the bag. Now I need to stitch the leather back together through the original holes. I'm taking some matching colour thread and using a very fine needle so I can get through the original holes. It's really important to go through the original holes as if you make a new hole in leather, there's no way of reversing that without then going through another repair process. I'm just gonna secure with a couple of stitches and then tie it in on itself to keep it neat. And now I just need to thread the end back through the leather and then secure it with a little bit of glue just like it was originally done so. And now I'm going to apply a leather protector to the surface of the leather this will protect the bag from dye transfer from jeans, UV damage and liquid and oil staining. It's really important to protect your leather bags for future wear and tear. I'm really happy how the restoration of this bag turned out. The interior is now ready to be worn and the lining is all fixed up. The outside is no longer showing any signs of wear and tear and the gold hardware is looking nice and shiny. I think my customer is going to be really pleased with the outcome.